You and I use technology every single day, but how well do you actually know it? Today, I'm going to share with you seven crazy facts that will change the way you use your everyday technology from how you can avoid doing these annoying challenges, to how a hacker can recover supposedly deleted files, to every image you upload might just be shouting out your exact location. Let's get into it. So let's say I have this file right here in my trash can. And what I can do is I can right click on it and I can say delete immediately. And now it's gone forever, right? Well, no. Let's take a look at what actually happens on our drive. Whether it's a hard drive or an SSD, it doesn't really matter. The important point is that all of the data is stored as a series of ones and zeros on this physical piece of hardware. And there are a bunch of, let's say, sections of this storage that have different things on them. And we also have on our drive a little registry that tells us where we can find different pieces of information that we might be looking for. So, for example, at something, I think it was maybe slash uh, documents slash sub, we have this file right here, this collection of data. Now, when I move that file into the trash, we didn't take all of these ones and zeros and write them to a different location, because that would be very inefficient since we might have billions of ones and zeros that would need to be written. Instead, what we did was we removed this top entry right here, in the uh, regular file area, so let's call this R, and then down in the trash file area, we added a new entry called sub. And we pointed from that new entry to this same collection of data. So no copying had to be done, we just changed from saying, oh, in the regular file area have this piece of data called sub, to in the trash file area have this piece of data called sub. Very fast, no matter how big the file is. Now, let's say we want to fully delete that file like I just did. Well, what do we do? We could overwrite all of these ones and zeros, but a lot faster thing that we could do would be just delete this little reference here, and then boom. Now the file isn't in our trash, it isn't in our regular area, it's just deleted. But the data is still here, the ones and zeros are still sitting there on our drive. We just don't have any way to access them, until some clever person comes along and decides to write a program that can look over all of the free space on the disk, all of the space that isn't pointed to in our regular file area or our trash file area and determine what pieces of storage can actually be turned into usable files. And then we can take any of those usable files that we want and put them back together in the regular area of our drive. Now, this is normally a good thing. If you accidentally wiped out all of the files on your SD card, you could use a utility like this and recover most or all of those files. But what if you want to delete sensitive information and you don't want anyone to be able to recover it? Well, there are two things you can do. First, what I like to do is make sure every device I use is implementing full disk encryption so that the entire drive, all of the files on it, are encrypted with my login password. And this makes sure that even if I delete a file and mark it as free, it's still encrypted, so someone looking over all of those free space files would still only find encrypted nonsense that they couldn't do anything with. And of course, if full disk encryption doesn't work for you, there are utilities that can manually go through and overwrite all of those zeros and ones to make sure that your data is securely destroyed. And speaking of hidden information, your printer might be doing a lot more than you think. You probably already know that if you try to print a dollar bill, your printer will detect a subtle pattern of dots on that bill and refuse to print it. But modern printers go a step further. They add their own secret pattern of dots to every single page you print. 
Now, this pattern isn't visible to the naked eye, but if you shine a blue light or a UV light, you may be able to make out a bunch of yellow dots all over the paper. And these yellow dots encode information. For example, the serial number of the printer, allowing anyone who finds that piece of paper and knows the system to figure out exactly what printer that piece of paper came from. Now, unlike the other facts in this video, this isn't something that you can or even need to do something about. It's just a fun fact. What's not fun though, are CAPTCHAs. Every time I see one of these little boxes, I have the exact same thought. I really hope I don't have to do one of those little challenges with the nine squares. And when one does pop up, I'm often faced with a decision like this. There's just a little bit of one object sticking over the edge, and I have no idea if I should count that or not count it. What is Google expecting me to do? But if you actually understand how these things work, it gets a lot simpler and a lot less frustrating. The CAPTCHA system doesn't actually start when you tick the box. It actually starts as soon as the page loads. Right away, the CAPTCHA starts looking at your browser, at what site you came from, at how your mouse is moving, and a whole bunch of other factors. And from those factors, it determines how likely it is that you are a bot. But it doesn't even require you to look like 100% a human. Usually 70 to 90% is fine. And the challenge only appears if the website thinks that you might just be a bot, and it'll keep making you do challenges until it's satisfied that you are in fact a human. So if you don't want to get hit with the challenge, there are a few things you can do to try to mitigate your bot likeness. One, try not to use a VPN. Two, log in to a Google account. And three, most importantly, use a mainstream browser like Google, Safari, or Edge. All of these things will help you look less like a bot and more like a human, hopefully reducing the amount of times you see that dreaded nine square challenge. Also, if you do get hit with the challenge, keep in mind you don't have to get everything 100% correct. You just have to look human enough for the CAPTCHA to let you through. So does this square count? Does it not count? At the end of the day, doesn't matter that much. Another cool fact about technology is that PCBWay, the sponsor of this video and an amazing manufacturer of PCBs, 3D prints, and a whole lot more, is turning 11. And because of this, they're having an absolutely amazing event where you can get some exclusive coupons, unlock exceptional sales on their PCB services, and of course, all of their other services, and even enter a giveaway just by signing up for a free account. So head on over to PCBWay.com using the first link in the description so you don't miss this awesome opportunity. The other day, I opened up my phone to check email, and as I was checking email, a new email popped in, straight from a mailing list. But how did they know that exactly that time was the best time to send me an email? These days, just about every mailing list or marketing email will contain what's called a tracking pixel. This is basically a tiny little image, usually just one pixel by one pixel, that is able to collect a bunch of information about you. Things like your IP address, what email client you use, and of course, whether the email was opened and what time it was opened at. The company behind the emails can then use that information to figure out where you are, what time you like to check email, and potentially a whole lot more. And while it might not seem like a big deal if some innocent mailing list is using this information to better your experience, what if a scammer uses the same technology to find out how successful a given scam is? Or what area your email address is in so they can send you an even better scam next time? The availability of this information could potentially put you in more risk. So how can we stop this? Well, most email clients will actually allow you to disable loading images, and some will even allow you to disable loading images just for unknown senders. And if your email client doesn't load the images, you can be tracked by the devious little pixel. But you might be giving up even more information about yourself than any of those cookies or tracking pixels every time you upload an image to the internet. 
modern smartphones don't just store pictures by themselves. They like to collect additional information, like when the photo was taken, where the photo was taken, what device the photo was taken on, and they encode all of this information into the image itself. In fact, by default, I think both iOS and Android encode your exact GPS coordinates into every image. So if you post an image every day, someone could track your location and find out with reasonable accuracy exactly where you are. And if these images are uploaded to a site like Facebook or Instagram, that company can then use your location for things like marketing and advertising. So what can we do? Well, thankfully, this feature is something you can disable quite easily in your OS's settings. And if an image already has metadata that you'd like to remove, there are plenty of utilities out there so you can strip out that metadata and upload the clean version wherever you want to. Last but not least, if you've ever seen a flash drive in a parking lot or a public place, you might have been tempted to plug it into your computer just to see what's on it. It's harmless, right? Wrong. That flash drive could potentially be housing a microcontroller ready and waiting to launch an attack on your computer. If you want to learn exactly how that works and how to defend against it, I made a video on that right here. So definitely check it out. I'll see you over there. Also subscribe.